All right, so equipment sets. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the different equipment sets. And, you know, there's, uh, I think, Ride Chart and um, uh, 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 Nighthawk have both done streams where they were talk about the equipment sets. The problem is, is those video on demand streams go away after like a month or two. Twitch only keeps them around for so long. So I'm recording this to my local disc as well as Twitch so that I can upload it to YouTube. So hello, people on YouTube. Um, so yeah, we're going to go into barracks. First thing we're going to do is just go over what all the equipment sets to do. Alright, so the first ones we have are pretty easy. Um, there's Bone, that gives you HP percent. There's Fury, that gives you power percent. There's Cold Steel, gives you armor percent. Uh, and Sharp Thorn gives you 10%. Just straight stat increase, pretty easy. And then there's also, I want to say, empowered versions of those as well. I like a tier two sort of. It's called Wraithbone, Dragon Fury, Ice Steel, and Elder Thorn. They're the same things that they give twice the benefit 10% versus 20% crit. Same thing, 15%, 20%. So that's not twice, it's extra 5%. 20 versus 25, 20%. 25%. So you get a better bonus off of these sort of tier two sets. Um, you get these from completing, I want to say stage four and higher of the equipment dungeons have a chance to drop these. Um, all of these first four, you can get them from the equivalent equipment dungeons, or you can also get them from doing just the scenario. You can get up to four stars uh, doing the campaign stuff on those. Um, so next we're going to talk about Bright Shield. Bright Shield, it gives you block. And it gives you a 5% uh, reflect on block. This is a lot of fun. I've actually killed guys. You know, they're almost dead. They hit one of my tanks and get reflected and end up killing themselves. Pretty fun. Uh, but what does block do? We're going to talk. This one's Night Leather. It gives you 15% aim and 5% armor penetration. So we're going to talk about aim and block for a second here. Uh, block gives you a chance to block an attack against you, which it does decrease the damage you take. Uh, it's not. A huge amount it does it, it, it's a noticeable difference but it's not like it blocks 90% of the damage or anything like that the main thing about block is if you block an attack it prevents any debuffs from landing on you uh, so it's a way that you can keep your guys from getting stunned from getting sleep from getting you know any, any of the different type of uh, effects that are in the game um, aim is kind of the counter to that um, aim increases your chance to land a debuff um, or to have an effect like attack bar reduction. Um, so your guys that primarily uh, you know, focus on uh, landing debuffs, or if you have a damage dealer that his main damage comes from landing dots, damage over time effects, uh, then you want to have aim on them. Um, a secondary thing that aim does is it also increases the chance that that's going to happen. Um, so you have, you know, let's say your, your hero has a 50% chance to stun, if you stack aim on him, you can actually up that 50% chance. Yeah. My dog's over there making funny noise in the corner. I want to make sure she wasn't about to throw up. We good. Alright. <laughs> so the next thing is Bloodstone, which gives you 15% life steal, 10% healing received. Uh, again, pretty self-explanatory. You know, 15% of the damage you deal, you gain back as your life. Um, whenever you gain life, you also get 10% healing. Uh, funny thing is this 10% healing applies to the 15% life steal. So you kind of get like a double whammy there. Uh, the next thing, so uh, those are all the two sets. The next four that we have are all the, I guess there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six different four set pieces. Um, the first one is the Iron Claw set. It gives you a 35% chance to counterattack. This means whenever you're attacked, you have a 35% chance to use the skill one from your hero on the target that attacked you. Uh, this is really good for tanks, uh, people with taunt, and people with uh, provoke because they're going to get attacked a lot. Um, it's also good for people who have decent abilities on skill one. Um, and that kind of leads right into Swift Steel. Swift Steel gives you a 25% chance anytime you attack you have a 25% chance of taking a bonus attack. Uh, that bonus attack is always a skill one attack, and it can't stack up. You can't prop multiple Swift Steel props in a row, uh, like you could Violent Procs and Summoner's Wars, for example. Um, 
So where would you use Swift Steel versus where would you use Counterattack? Um, typically, I would recommend if you know your hero is going to get targeted a lot, I would use Iron Claw. Uh, because 35% chance is higher than 25% chance, and if they're getting attacked by multiple heroes, that's more chances for this to proc. Now, if it's someone like a DPS unit that you don't expect, or you hopefully don't expect to get attacked a lot, because they're probably going to die if they do, um, then Swift Steel is the better option for that. Um, some good candidates for Swift Steel are the, uh, like, Razor Claw. Uh, here, let me show you. The, the, the class I'm talking about. These guys right here. So this one's the light one. He's Sun Slash. Uh, but uh, all of them have a dot on their skill one. If I just back out here. Let's jump into here. I'll talk more about him once we actually review all the fire monsters here. Um, but let's see. Where is he? There he is. So Flame Claw. Sabertooth. All the Sabertooths on their skill one have a chance to deal damage over time. So if you have Swift Steel on them, and they're attacking twice, uh, they have twice, they, they have a chance to apply two damage over time, which is really huge when it comes to equipment dungeons. Alright, so the next thing is War Tech. 50% of crits will be super crit. Okay, first of all, what is a super crit? A super crit is a crit that does 200% extra critical damage on top of whatever additional crit percent you have uh, from your gear. Um, so let's say you had, you know, uh, some gloves that had plus 50% crit damage. Uh, you would do, you know, 200% plus 50%, 250% extra damage when you crit. However, the way that they try to balance this is it's only a 50% chance to crit. Or a 50% chance when you crit. So first, you have to crit. And second, it's only half the time, you know, coin flip of whether or not the super crit is going to activate. That being said, this is the end game build for almost every direct damage dealer that just focus off of doing burst, you know, blow up the enemy uh, damage. Uh, the super crits do ridiculous amounts of damage. Uh, but again, you have to have, I would say, close to 100% crit, and, you know, to really even get a, a, a benefit of this. Because uh, again, say you have 50% crit, 50% times 50% is only a 25% chance of a super crit actually happening. One out of four, you know, the other rest of the time, half the time you're not even doing critical damage, so you're just kind of hitting like a wet noodle, you don't want that. Uh, so once you can get your crit high enough up there that you're critting reliably, super crit's definitely the way to go. Uh, this one gets a lot of questions, which does, is buffs and debuffs can crit. <laughs> what does that mean? They can crit? Buffs? Do you like a speed buff can crit? Um, so what it is, is, it, again, this is affected by your critical rate. So if you have Witchstone, but you have 10% crit rate, it's going to be useless because you're never going to crit. Um, so whenever an enemy, or not, not an enemy, whenever one of your heroes has a Witchstone set and they cast a, a buff, like let's say a speed buff, uh, on the back end, they determine whether or not you crit the same way they determine whether or not your attack crits. They look at your crit rate. If you do crit and you have Witchstone, then it increases the beneficial effects of that buff or debuff by 50%. So say you know you have attack buff increases attack by 50%, it would do an additional 25% extra attack buff if that crit. And the way you can tell whether or not it crit or not is the buffs that are over your guys, typically they have a white outline, kind of like how you see this life symbol right here has a white uh, outline around the square. That's what your buffs and that's what the debuffs look like. If you see one that has a yellow outline around it, that means that that buff is empowered. It is a witchstone critted buff. Um, and the same thing applies to debuffs. So a dot does 5% damage over time, right? Every time the enemy takes a turn, 5% of their life goes down if they have uh, the, the bleed, the dot on them. If it's a witchstone dot, then it's going to do an extra 2.5%, so you're going to get a total of 7.5% of their total maximum life every turn. Um, so, you know, your, your heroes that focus around debuffing and buffing the enemy team, that's really where, where, where you want to focus with them, is you want to focus the witchstone, and you have to have crit. Yeah, I actually uh, figured that out, too, just by watching my, uh, what's this guy's name? This guy right here, the blue cows, uh, Silvus. You know, I have Silvus on Witchstone, and I was playing with them, and I started paying attention, so I was like, how do you know if, because I want to know if my crit was high enough to actually work on them. Um, and so I started paying attention. That's when I noticed that you can actually see a border. There's a different border around the ones that have the Witchstone effect to them.
Um, all right, so let's move on to Life Soap. Life Soap is your general go-to set for healers because it increases the healing they do by 30%. What's not to love about that? There are some caveats on that. Um, healers that have really good skill one effects, you might want to use uh, Swift Steel instead. Uh, good examples of this are all the bards. The bards on their skill one have a chance to reset their cooldowns. So you have a bard that's you know using his skill one twice you know, in a single turn. That's a, ch a chance to reduce his cooldowns twice on the same turn. Uh, so they might be a better choice for Swift Steel rather than Life Steel. Um, same thing that Dark Fairy I have. I have her on Swift Steel because her heals only activate every time she attacks. So I want her to attack more to try to heal more. Sort of an RNG heal thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, in general, your other healers, you're going to want to run on this like uh, the Light Fairy. I have my Light Fairy on Life Silk and she outputs some really good heals. Um, the last set is the Titan Guard set. Titan Guard said it reduces, or uh, yeah, it does, uh, takes 20% of the damage that your allies would, would uh, take, and it gives it to whatever heroes it has this equipped instead. And it also reduces the damage by 10%, um, or reduces the damage they take by 10%. So this is good for like someone like Petra or any beefy tanky guys that don't have a taunt. That way they can still use their beefiness to contribute to the survivability of the team, um, even though they can't, you know, directly provoke or taunt the enemy team. Um, another good example of this in the four-star category is all those beetles. Uh, the beetles don't have a taunt and they don't have a provoke, so but they're and they're beefy. So what, how, how do you make use of that? Well, you can give them the Titan Guard, and it'll help reduce the damage that your party takes. Um, so after that, uh, you have you know the empowered version of these first six equipments that you can get up here, and they. Literally do the same thing, same block, reflect, aim, armor, pen, except they're just a higher amount than the defaults. Alright, so now I can go into talking about what's in the gear specifically. So in each slot, you have uh, different, uh, different stats that can be in that slot. Um, if you ever want a way to quickly look at what can be there, if you go on the Reddit site, On the right side, there's an equipment stats guide. And the very first thing you see is a table showing what gear can uh, have what stats. So you, know, you can see that a weapon can have crit, crit multiplier, power. A helm can have power, armor, HP. A chest can have armor or HP, and so on and so on. Um, this is good for newer players. Once you've been playing for a while, it, you're just going to remember it's going to be sort of second nature. Um, and, and also, while we're here, I want to point out there's some other good guides that um, other people have put out, like a dungeon guide. This was actually using Nighthawk's stream. He, he uh, linked to it, and he kind of gives a synopsis of what he talked about in the stream. Who was it? This, this is Uscape211 that made this guide here. And it talks about how to beat each of the uh, equipment dungeons and sort of what team comps you want to work with. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I would really recommend you guys checking out this subreddit here. There's a link directly from the game to get to it, and it's got some good information on it. So, whenever we're talking about, you know, the weapon, what should we use for the weapon here? Your options are crit rate, crit multiplier, and power. A uh, general rule of thumb is crit percent is almost always the best solution, the best possible thing to have here. The reason is, is you know, it, it scales with everything. Um, you know, your damage, if you crit, is increased. Your healing, if you crit, you can actually crit heal, so that'll be increased. Um, and also, if you have a guy like Giles, right? Giles does damage based off of his armor. So if I put power in this slot, it's, it's not going to help him much, but if I put crit and he crits, then it's going to increase the damage he does. Also along those lines, why crit percent over crit multiplier? Well, if you don't crit, it doesn't matter how high your multiplier. You can have a 3,000% crit multiplier. If you don't crit, it don't matter. So you have to crit in order to even make use of that. Um, so then you might say, well, why would they have the other things? What's the point of having other options on weapon besides crit? And the answer to that for power is bombs, 
And the answer to that, the crit percent, is units that specifically have abilities that give guaranteed crits. Um, so let's talk about the power first. So uh, there's uh, a bunch of different units in the game that have an ability to place a bomb on the target. That damage is based strictly off of power. So you don't care about crit rate. You don't care about crit multiplier. All you care about is stacking as much power as you can. And that's it. And that's where having power in the weapon slot really would shine. Um, and, and, you know, stacking straight fury born would shine for that. Um, and then crit multiplier, there are uh, units, I'll go over one of them in uh, the video later, later on in the stream when I'm reviewing the fire monsters. Um, but there are, there are heroes that have a guaranteed chance to crit, uh, some of them if conditions are met. Um, for those, you can stack it up to be like a one skill nuke, so that you stack as much crit percent as possible, and you just rely on that one skill that's going to guarantee crit to do just as much damage as possible. Um, so that's kind of why, why you have that option. And plus, it would be kind of boring if you only had one stat that you could roll over and over. Uh, so the helmet. The helmet can go armor, HP, and it can go power. Okay, so you have HP and armor. I'm going to talk about those two first. Which one should you use? Um, if you're using a tank, typically you want to go 2 and 1. You want to go 2 HP, 1 armor, or 2 armor and 1 HP. If you're going for a DPS and you need survivability, this is something to keep in mind. If you have a DPS unit, always keep in mind a dead DPS does 0 DPS. So if your guy's going to die real fast, what's the point of even having a ton of power on him or you know, a ton of crit and everything like that if he's just going to die to an AoE? Uh, so some of your guys you might have to actually equip with HP or with armor in some of these slots. And you know, on a DPS unit, I would actually recommend HP over armor for the most part. Um, of course, it's depending if you only have two star HP and a five star armor, by all means go with the armor. But there's a lot of abilities out there that uh, defense break people, so it decreases how much defense the enemy has. We've seen this debuff, I'm sure, already in the game. Um, and there's also abilities out there that ignore armor completely. Uh, so, you know, and, and there, there aren't many abilities out there that ignore, you can't really ignore HP. And there are abilities that do damage based off of max HP, but your DPS units are never going to have a huge HP pool. So it's never going to be something you have to worry about as far as like, oh no, their HP is too high, this attack is going to do ridiculous damage based off of max HP. You don't have to worry about that. Um, so I, I would recommend on damage dealers, again, HP over, over armor, if, if they need more survivability. Um, again, for your tanks, look, read your skills. Uh, Guile specifically does damage based off of armor. So I have him armor, armor HP versus... Um, let's see, right, my fire shield maiden. Uh, you know, she doesn't do damage based off of her armor, so I have her HP, HP, armor. And then I have Petra, who does damage based off of his max HP, so I just do straight HP. Uh, let's see. Same. Yeah, uh, as uh, Zach here in uh, chat mentioned, there, there are some great support and defensive abilities that uh, scale with HP. And Petra is one of those examples. Um, so since he scales with HP, you know, obviously you stack HP on him. I don't know if there's any DPS, any damage units that scale off of HP, though. You know, if there are, then by all means, you might want to, you know, plug HP versus armor and vice versa. If you have a DPS unit that for some reason scales off of armor on, like, some passive or something, then you might go armor over HP. Uh, but anyways, um, so going going forward, uh, the chest piece can have either HP or armor. Um, yeah, uh, good good point. Heals also uh, are based off of uh, your target's HP. You know, if you look at your healers, they say heal a target for ten percent of their HP. So if they have more HP, you're getting more heals out of that. Um, now there also is an argument for well, armor increases the effectiveness of every HP point you have. But again, if we're talking about a DPS unit, he's not going to have a lot of base armor to begin with. So, you know, I think HP, again, is still generally the, the better way to go. And these are just general recommendations. Um, you know, it's going to be different depending on your setup, your, your hero kits, um, and, and what you have to work with. Um, all right. So this, you know, you only got two choices, armor or HP. Um, the gloves, you have three choices. You have HP, or you have crit percent, or you have uh, 
attack or attack power. I think I should call it power. Um, so for this again, you know, bombers you want power, um, obviously. Tanks and stuff you want to keep HP on them, and guys that you want to deal damage with, you can go crit percent on them if your crit rate is high. If your crit rate isn't high, then just put power on them because there's no point again in using crit percent if you can if you're not critting. Um, and then we go down to the helmet, or not the helmet, the boots and the ring. These are both the same in that they can only have block, aim, and speed on them. Um, block, you know, we talked about block and aim here when we talked about the bright shield and the night leather set. Um, so, yeah, these give you like some pretty good boosts. That. I mean, you can see I have four star, well, I have a four star and a five star, my five star isn't maxed yet. But, you know, at level 20, on, on boots and rings, you get 40% blocks. So that's 80% block right there, just between those two pieces of gear. So yeah, you get pretty good stats from these uh, boots and rings, which gives you the ability to mix it up where you can have maybe one block, one speed if you need to. Uh, but this comes down to the individual hero. If you look at their kit, a lot of them have stuff that say, you know, uh, they scale, like uh, uh, some of the Oath Bowmen have a passive that makes their damage scale off of aim. So you probably want to go aim with them. Uh, the Fire Oath Bowman has it scales off of speed. So you want to go speed with him. Um, if, if you're unsure, uh, if, you know, if, if you want more survivability, go block. If you want to land debuffs, go aim. If you want to uh, go first, then go speed. And that's really arena. I mean, the, the arena meta right now is sort of revolving around what they call alpha strike teams, which it means your team is set up in a way that they attack first. And they all go, and they all do some sort of AOE, and probably have some sort of stun or sleep or something like that in there. Um, so they just go, and they take turn after turn and just beat you down. Um, yeah, for sure, speed and arena. Ex exactly, I agree 100%. Um, but you have to have you have to have uh, heroes that uh, synergize with that. You can't just throw a bunch of speed on on Petra and expect you know to go into you know arenas. Uh, it's not going to work like that. Um, you know, but let's let's take. So I was lucky enough this past week to pull a water oath bowman. Don't have him geared yet, but if you look at his skills, see he does additional damage based off of aim. So I probably want some aim on him. But he also has an AOE sleep, and he also has uh, some other good stuff as well. But I might want him to have some speed so that he can drop that sleep on people. You know, before they get a chance to move. Uh, and there's also there's just some other guys I have, but that's that's sort of that uh, alpha strike team strategy here that people talk about. Uh, but anyway, so that completes our rundown of the equipment sets. Uh, if you guys have anything to add that is watching in chat, feel free to, to chip in. All right, so there you go. That's the equipment in a nutshell. Um, feel free to if you have any. Uh, you know, more advanced questions or anything, um, you know, take to the forums and ask. People are very helpful. They're more than glad to try to help out. You can ask in chat. Um, sometimes people will help out. Sometimes they won't. This is kind of a toss-up there. It's, it's an online game. What do you expect, you know? Um, oh, yeah, jewel slots. So let me talk about jewel slots, too. Here, let's look at this thing. So your equipment also has a rarity. And a rarity signifies how many slots it has. These are all randomly generated. So, um, you know, I got, you, this is unique to this piece. It, 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 next time it could drop in completely different compositions. Um, I do know that the devs have said that certain pieces can only have speed. I, or speed can only drop on some pieces, so I'm pretty sure only gloves and um, rings can have this speed slot on them right here. So there's a limit to how much speed you can stack on something. Um, but these jewel slots allow you to put in one of these jewels. I don't have that many HP, you can see. But the jewels come in all different, all different uh, levels as well. One star all the way up to six star. And once you equip them, then you can level them up. If I change a hero here, so yeah, you can use this to level it up. Yay! Now I got an extra two percent crit instead of one percent crit. Um, so this is kind of what can give you that extra edge. So you know how do you get to almost 100% crit whenever even a four or six star uh, crit percent uh, weapon is like 48% crit? I think. Well, the, the answer is jewels. So you'd have these jewels here, 
uh, that as you upgrade them, they give you extra crit. And with good jewels, and you know, again, I could get lucky and have a uh, legendary glove, let's say, and have it have four uh, crit uh, jewels in it. And I can, you know, put four crit gems in it and get ridiculous amounts of crit from that one piece of gear. So that's sort of what you want to look for when you're farming gear. Your, your gear progression is going to go like this. First, it's going to be like, can I get gear? Um, and then when, once you start getting into gear that you want, as in like what sets you want, then you're going to be like, okay, well now I need better gear. I need three star, I need four star, I need five star, and eventually at the end, six star gear. Um, once you start getting in the uh, the rarity of gear or the stars of gear that you want, um, then you're going to start looking for, well, now I want gear that has these specific slots to it. I need gear that has, you know, crit percent. I, I, I need to be able to get, like, at least two crit sockets from this gem right here or from this piece of gear right here. And that's, that's what sort of is going to drive the end game of Alliance. It's going to be trying to get the six-star gear that also has the right sockets in it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I got pretty lucky with uh, some of these. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saving this for... Uh, probably going to throw it on Petra eventually once I six-star them. Um, but anyways, so that's that's what the gem mechanic is. And that is, again, what the end-game gear goal is of Alliance. And, and they've come out and said that. I specifically asked them in an AMA, what is the end-game that they see? Um, and that's sort of what it is. All right, cool. Well, let me stop this video, and then we'll start the next one, which we're going to go into reviewing Fire Monsters.